Um, Erev Tov, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, for coming. First of all, uh, I guess, I don't know, I'm sorry, or full disclosure, if you were on the lower school meeting, I'm back. Um, and I'm going to be uh, emceeing, I guess, and moderating tonight. And some of the things that you will hear are things you've heard uh, in the past. We're going to talk about some school-wide um, school policies and plans, but we're also going to really, we are going to focus, of course, on the middle school. I want to start um, with, uh, I'll, I'll start screen sharing in a second, but just to, to talk to people for a moment first. Um, I want to start just with a sense of Tov that, that I think we all feel. Um, I don't think anybody here, I speak for myself, the administrators, the teachers, and I, I imagine most of you, um, felt we're sure in September that they would make it to 170 days of school. So we are very, very, very grateful, um, um, grateful to Hashem, grateful to everybody that helped make that happen. Um, we certainly tried to do our part. Um, the students were amazing, truly, truly amazing. I, uh, I had the zechut, uh, I guess, to announce this morning at uh, Tefillah that uh, kids who are after their second shot don't have to mask outdoors. Um, you know, kind of as, as we watch these slow baby steps of reentering, um, I think that we really should, should pause to, to think about our kids who went through 15 months of, of challenge, but really did that with tremendous, tremendous grace. And to all of you and to our teachers who, are really been, who have been heroic um, over the course of this year um, to, get us to, this, to get us to this point where we're having an in-person graduation for eighth graders uh, next week. And really to be able to say that we've uh, just about made it through a year with, I think, three Zoom days, maybe a couple of snow days, but really, I, I've often described it to people as uh, more normal than not. It certainly hasn't been normal. It certainly is, uh, you know, a challenge that we're going to remember for a long time, talk about for a long time, think about what it, what it means for us for a long time. Um, but at the same time, a lot of gratitude that I feel and, and that I know that you share um, that our kids have been able to, uh, to be in school this year. So I want to, first of all, um, thank everybody um, from parents to students to medical professionals that made that happen um, and really just join with you in taking a moment to, to express that gratitude and to, to reflect on that because uh, it should not be it should not be taken for granted. Um, whether it's whatever term you like silver linings or you know lessons learned or new world or new normal um, you know a lot when, when we've had some time to breathe over the, over the course of this year um, we have had opportunities to think about, wow, this is really interesting. We would have never tried this, um, and it's really good. Um, and I think in particular, actually, in the middle school, um, the change was maybe in, in, in many ways, maybe even more radical than in other departments, uh, certainly in terms of the schedule of the day, in terms of this homeroom type class. Uh, kids really be, and we were nervous about it, uh, to be honest, right? We were nervous about having kids with 13, 14, 15 kids pretty much the entire day. Um, but I think we can say now um, that while certain things are certainly going to change, I'm not going to be teaching my Gemara class, God willing, on Zoom. Um, but, but in person, I had my first in-person Gemara class of the year uh, today. Um, with my Gemara students, and that was that was actually exhilarating. And you know, those are the types of things that we're obviously going to be going back to. Um, at the same time, I think um, that we can reflect on a lot um, on a lot that we were able to learn um, and that we want to take from this year. And and that's really what um, that's really what uh, tonight is about. I, I would say, even including this, um, you know, including this meeting. You know, we I don't think we had uh, too many meetings where you you had a couple hundred people show up. Um, you know, from home to be able to have a conversation about school. Um, and, you know, it started out with, with, with crisis and with town halls that were almost weekly or biweekly, um, you know, to just keep ourselves informed. Um, and it turned into something that we've all learned, learned is a way to, to connect. Um, so a, as one of many examples in terms of things that we, that we can, can be thinking about in terms of what we learned from this year and how we want to structure the, uh, the, the year to come. 
It's 8.07. I am hoping that this meeting will be over by 8.45, just to kind of manage expectations, perhaps, perhaps a little bit earlier. Um, I want to go through some things that are school-wide, most things that are middle school-wide, and, and pass it over to Rebecca for much of this meeting, um, and then find some time uh, to take some of your questions and comments. Like I said, just to begin again, thank you to our teachers. We were blessed to have a new building, which we all benefited from. The middle school uh, donated their space when the ELC was being built, um, and the middle school benefited from, um, from that space as we were able to, to allocate more room to the middle school um, with a new building being built literally just in time. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Most of you haven't had the chance to see it. Hopefully you will find opportunities to do that. We'd love to show you around and it's been great for the community. We're also um, looking at a year of record enrollment school-wide. Um, I, I shared with, uh, with some people last week, I, I was talking to them at a, at a function. Um, these are good problems. Um, they are problems because it's really hard. There's literally almost no grade where there's, where there's space uh, for new students, but, but it's, I think, a tribute to, uh, to the way people feel about the school, and we're very grateful for that. So we are looking at record enrollment throughout the, uh, throughout the building or buildings next year. This was a year of tremendous development success. Again, I think um, people have just felt, people have felt grateful, people have felt good, and we are grateful. We actually feel that feeling, you know, to go out into the carpool lane every day, um, and still in June to have parents saying, wow, this is so great. You know, we're so, we're so happy, we're so grateful, we're so thankful to the teachers that this has happened. Um, actually, it actually trickles down and we, we feel that. And I, I personally, and I know on behalf of the teachers and the administrators, I appreciate that. Tonight, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the uh, back to the basics. One of the things, especially I think in the middle school that was felt was a little bit of a less frenetic environment. Um, we like a little frenetic. We like, we like a little bit of noise and we like a lot of, you know, we like movement, but we think that we've, you know, we found a space, um, again, some of it that we're, that we're, that we're not going to keep, but some that we might be able to keep um, that I think allowed kids to focus in a different kind of way, that allowed kids to have relationships with each other and with its staff members in a different kind of way. And we hope that some of those things will um, will remain. That didn't come, it didn't come easily. There were challenges institutionally uh, in terms of uh, resources, expenses, in terms of teachers and classrooms, um, in terms of, you know, retrofitting the building to get to this um, uh, to get to this point and some of the institutional challenges we're having going forward is going to figure out managing the um, the enrollment and what to do communally in terms of that um, communally I think uh, also just you know uh, that we're, we're living in a, an increasingly polarized environment um, whether that's politically or ashkafically or whether it's America or Israel and figuring out how to talk to kids about uh, about things where people within our community don't always is agree, but we, we, we learn to talk with respect is an important thing and one of our challenges that we're thinking about a lot. Nationally, internationally, in terms of Ami Israel, it's been, of course, a challenging year. Certainly the world, we, the, the, the challenge of this virus is, is very, very real. Um, and the challenges that we've seen in Medina Israel over the last month um, have, been, have been very real as well. And as, as a school that prides itself as, a, as having and fostering for our students a deep connection to Medina Israel, um, that's been that's been on our minds certainly as well. There's a new Israeli government that's about to be uh, sworn in. We certainly hope for um, for days that will be bright and good, and that Hashem will grant wisdom to to the elected leaders to to make good decisions. And we hope to be able. We should certainly will and are committed to being able to continue to support Medinat Israel um, and to make sure that our kids are very deeply and meaningfully connected to Medinat Israel. So those those are some of the things um, that we think about. Um, as we prepare for uh, as we prepare for the next year, you know, traditionally, certainly around February, definitely by April, uh, there's a lot of focus on next year, whether it's about whether it's hiring or scheduling, etc. Um, what we'd like to do over the next couple of minutes is give you a window into that, and this particularly a window into that um, with the lens of some of the things that we think we have learned from this year and that we're going to keep and that are going to. Um, that are going to change, and we think and we hope change for the good. Um, Rebecca, I think uh, you're going to take the next uh, couple of slides. And uh, and again, anybody, I don't see the chat. I'll try to see it. But but I, I'm actually going to guess that many of your questions will be answered. And I'm going to commit to the fact that we will leave time for questions at the end so we can respond to things that we might have uh, missed. So go ahead, Rebecca. Thank you. I thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Rebecca Ostrinagata. I am. I'm the associate principal in the middle school. 
Um, and, you know, as Rabbi Kress said, I think that we wouldn't be SAR if we just went into uh, next year um, without having learned from this year. And so um, one of the things we spoke about as a middle school is, you know, what are the things that we know we want to hold on to and what are the things that we are ready to say goodbye to? Um, and I think as Rabbi Kress also mentioned, you know, the, the small homeroom structure really did give us um, a sense of connection that, um, you know, we didn't, I don't know that we knew we were missing so much, but we certainly felt it was very powerful this year. Um, and we also know that despite the fact that it was really powerful, um, really at this stage, uh, young people do need to be interacting with a slightly wider uh, range of peers. And so what we're trying to do with this, just as a frame, is basically take the best of both worlds, what we had pre-COVID, what we did this year, um, and combine it into a model that we think really um, builds on strengths from both models. Um, so the, there, was, there was a letter that went out about class placement. So hopefully some of this sounds vaguely familiar, but I'll go through it and then we'll take questions. So basically the way it'll work in the middle school is that we will, um, we will keep some of what we had pre-COVID and have half the day spent um, in leveled classes. That will be math, Gemara, and Ivri, where students will be um, grouped more homogeneously by level, um, and students will have different teachers for each of those classes, um, and those classes will be in person, as Rabbi Krauss said. Um, the other half of the day, more or less, will be spent in homerooms, and those homerooms will be built on what we did this year, although expanded just slightly, so it won't just be two teachers um, per homeroom. The way we're going to do it instead is every homeroom will have one teacher, um, but that homeroom will be part of what we're calling a band, and that's basically three classes. Um, and so those three homerooms will share a team of three to four teachers who will take responsibility for teaching um, all of the homeroom classes. And our homeroom classes are Chumash, Navi, um, Math, uh, sorry, Chumash, Navi, English, Social Studies, um, and Science. So the idea being that half your day, you're spent in this more um, you know, this tighter knit, more intimate class, and half your day you're mixing with a larger group of students. Um, go to the, just to give a sense of what that looks like. So before you get overwhelmed by this, let me just explain what it is. This is a sample eighth grade um, schedule for the eighth grade. The reason why I put only one grade and didn't put all three is because it was a lot of information and it's relatively similar um, from grade to grade. It's just things happen at different places. Um, and I'm just gonna sort of walk you through what I just said and, and bring that to life a little bit on the schedule. Um, so first of all, one of the things that I didn't mention in my previous thing, but one of the silver linings of this year was um, what this year was, we called it arrival time. Um, next year, as you can see, we haven't quite settled on a name, um, but basically from 8 to 8.40 in the morning will be independent work time, advisory, um, sometime, a lot of times that will be uh, very informal and individualized time for students to work. Sometimes that will be small group instruction or support. Um, and sometimes that will be a time for the homeroom class to come together um, and do um, some of our advisory curriculum. Um, and perhaps, hopefully, if we're able to gather as a grade, that will also be a time where we'll gather, let's say once a week as a grade, or maybe every other week as a grade to do community meetings. Um, from there, the students go into tefillah, which we are hoping um, will again be by grade. Um, and so, and so the first part of the day is really spent the, the first chunk, the first half hour is with your homeroom and the second part you're um, hopefully interacting with a larger range in tefillah. Um, then we go into sort of the homeroom portion of the day. I'm going to have you look at just this light blue column here. Um, and I'll explain why there's two columns in a minute. So basically you can see this light blue column and that's that's three of the homerooms in sixth grade. They're gonna start their day in um, STEAM. That's also something new we're introducing this year. So we're, gonna, we're building in, um, we're building in twice a week for every class, a um, STEM or arts period. And that's gonna alternate over the course of the year. You'll hear more about that later. Um, and then this big chunk of time will be homeroom classes and that time will be divided. So sometimes that might be Chumash, sometimes that might be English, sometimes that might be social studies, that'll alternate. And all of these homeroom slots will alternate. And, um, and again, the teachers from the three or four teachers making up um, that team of teachers will teach that. So you will be taught Tanakh by a Tanakh teacher and you will be taught English by, or humanities by a humanities teacher. Um, but it will be a small group of teachers who know, um, who are working with a smaller group of students. 
Um, this is, I don't know why lunch got deleted here, sorry, but then um, we go into a, a nice long break, 1150 to 1250, that's gonna be lunch and recess. Um, and what we call in the middle school office hours, which is an opportunity to meet um, individually with teachers. Um, so giving the students a good long break in the middle of the day. And again, God willing, that will be grade wide and, and students will be able to mix. And then you go into, with the exception of last period here, you go into what we were talking about, sort of the leveled portion of the day, um, where students will have math, Gamara, and then Ivrit. Um, those classes will be taught by math, Gamara, Ivrit teachers respectively. Um, and, and those classes will be leveled. Um, one more note, and then I'm going to pause and Rabbi Cross, you can jump in if there's anything you feel needs to be clarified. The reason why you see light blue here and dark blue is because basically this, the light blue and together represents the entire grade. Um, so the light blue is um, three of the homerooms and the dark blue is the other three homerooms. Um, so as I described before, you have um, what we're calling bands, which is basically a group of three homerooms that share a group of teachers. Um, and each homeroom teacher has a dedicated teacher, but they're part of a team of teachers that serve the students in their band. Yeah, Rebecca, just it looks like there was one just clarifying question. So you're basically looking at a grade that's divided into these two bands. So let's keep round numbers. 100 kids in a grade, the bands are 50, and those bands are divided into three classes. Those three classes are going to have a team of teachers that are, that are interacting with that same group of or you know that group of three students in different kinds of way, but the team of teachers will be humanities teacher, Tanakh teacher, science teacher, etc. And then they're going to have these um, these I guess departmentalized classes, right? Math, Gemara, and Ivrit, uh, um, where there'll be other teachers, not not from that group of you know, teachers in the band, who will be who will be working with them. So you're basically looking at two right six classes within a grade and two bands within those six classes. We can go back to it. Um, a little bit later. Somebody also asked about the staggered arrival time. It's a, it's a question that, you know, is still, you know, we actually thought that, you know, part of this less frenetic pace of the day actually started in the morning. It's also why Tfila is not at the beginning of the day. We think it's important to start our day with Tfila, but we also found that actually, you know, kids coming in, but, you know, five minutes late, 10 minutes late, et cetera, and coming at to Tfila at different times and not necessarily being anchored before they get to Tfila was less healthy. And we found that, that actually the, the pace of the of the kind of getting into Tfila, starting the day, going to Tfila, for, for many kids at least, um, was something that we liked. And therefore, you're kind of going to go to your classroom, get anchored. It is, it's not exactly a staggered arrival. I think it will be, I would call it a loose 8 o'clock. So between 8 o'clock and 8.10, certainly by 8.10, we would expect everybody to be uh, to be in classes. Um, and, and then again, like I said, you know, to feel like going out to feel at 845, um, Rebecca, can we go to the next slide. Yeah. Yep. You want to talk about this a little bit? Um, yeah, so I spoke to this, um, a little bit before, but basically this is a new, um, this is a new initiative for the middle school. We have been working for years to figure out how best to get in, um, more formal STEM education. And also um, previous to this year, we only had arts education through sixth grade. So this is a really exciting opportunity that we jumped on to really integrate this throughout. Um, basically the idea is that students will um, rotate through art and STEM offerings. And you can see sort of the rotation at the bottom. Um, and the idea is that over the course of a year, students will have exposure to a, to a range of offerings in both the arts um, and in STEM. Okay, yeah, and I'm gonna, uh, it's hard for me to keep up with the questions as we go through the slides. So let's go through a few more. And then again, we will definitely go back and, and get to them. And I get it, we're, we, we've been talking about some of these concepts for a long time. So if they need some clarification, we'll certainly uh, take the time to do that. Uh, the next one's also interesting. Um, those of you that are at the lower school, you know, one of the things that we realized again, not realized, we always knew this, but we actually were able to do it this year is to, kids should be moving around every day. We know that. You should be having gym once a week, PE once a week or twice a week. And now actually um, what we're trying to do is to make sure that formally, um, uh, in the lower grades, it's more straightforward. It's literally have the same half hour every day. With the middle school, uh, a little bit more challenging, but basically the STEM or the STEAM classes and the PE classes kind of working against each other. So twice a week and twice a week, but also making sure there's a big chunk of time in the schedule uh, for lunchtime. And that includes daily open gym time, which, which is reserved. Um, really making sure that kids on a daily basis can be with some free play, with some organized play, but really encouraged to be moving um, more than I think they have um, in the past. Um, so here's a, uh, 
here's a sense of the uh, times again, the formal times and the and the more informal times that we have for each grade. Like, um, uh, to be out there. Sorry, go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah. No, yeah, I just wanted to add that you know we we spoke about whether we should have formal P, but this year they had. I mean, it was sort of a mix between recess and, but uh, it was, I guess, sort of more formal um, four times a week. And we talked about should they have formal P four times a week because we knew we wanted increased movement. I um, mean, so it was a strategic decision to do formal PE twice a week for 40 minutes as opposed to every day. The feeling being that the students do need to be moving and we're going to build in those opportunities to move. Um, but, you know, by middle school, the, the, the formal instruction in PE, it sort of, it wears thin on them. <laughs> they get, they start to get a little resistant to it. And so Mrs. Horowitz and I discussed it and decided that strategically we would, we would limit the formal piece of it to twice a week for middle school. Okay. A um, couple of things that you might be wondering about, just get lunch, our lunchrooms are coming back and their lunchrooms are not going to be used as, uh, as classrooms, we're going to have a cafeteria for the middle school. We we built that cafeteria only six or seven years ago. And we're very grateful uh, to have it back. We hope that the whole grade will be in there. We're going to have kids who are vaccinated, I think, in the lower school. Where the questions are a little bit more up in the air, but with middle school or with I'd say certainly with seventh and eighth grades, um, there are fewer questions around that. Um, but we're actually very hopeful that that everybody, all the grades, will have lunch in a cafeteria with their grades. And again, we're going to obviously be following the recommendations. We, you know, we we've learned a long time ago already that we're not going to make plans or detailed plans about certain things three months in advance because we really need to see um, the direction of of all the health recommendations. We need to see what happens, obviously, in camps. Uh, but certainly, right now, there's a hopeful time, and um, our medical committee will still be will still continue to be involved in guiding us. Um, and help that they've been great and helping us, you know, make decisions that are responsible and that are um, prudent and appropriate, et cetera. So we're going to be, but we certainly hope to have kids, you know, we, we, Aaron, I got, I, we have to give a shout out to Aaron. He, he delivered 1200 individually wrapped meals um, every single day or four days a week. Um, and you guys individually wrapped the fifth day. Thank you. Um, but uh, he did that and that was amazing, but obviously going back to, uh, you know, to uh, to a lunchroom and to kids being able to hang out with each other, et cetera, we think is a, is a good thing. Transportation has I sent has been sent out. Private busing is available. Public bus will be available for the from the districts that it's available from. Um, we will continue to work with them and to work with you to to make that work. Again, questions about whether there'll be limits on buses or not. Um, it's really too early to tell. We are planning for basically, you know. Uh, capacity on capacity on buses but again we will wait to see whether any of the guidance recommendations change um we have a less control over the public busing that we that we offer that's the decision of the districts but usually is is in line with the recommendations that we follow on our private busing um so that's pretty much where we are there i see the questions are coming in but i don't see that give me another second adina talk to us about programming you've been amazing by the way adina eighth graders just had an amazing trip to camp Moshava. Adina and Ailey and Shira in the ELC have been as a team really working together to make programming happen, even when programming is has been and was very challenging. Three months in our basements and then, um, you know, 10 months of school with, with a lot of limitations. So call a cover to you um, and maybe you can talk about some of the things that are coming back. Sure. I think the biggest difference is that we keep gathering over Zoom this year and we are going to be done with that, hopefully. It doesn't mean that we won't use Zoom maybe to like one of the things I thought was really cool is like on Yom Azikaron, having a chayal, a soldier from Israel on base speaking to us, that was like a cool use of Zoom. But I think moving forward, we can kind of move away from like Zoom minute to minutes, for example, and just kind of gather as a grade. Um, but Chola Moed, which I think is kind of short this year, I think it's two days um, and early in September, but we'll have outings for the grades. Hopefully that will all work out. Names Not Numbers, which is an eighth grade staple. Um, we'll meet um, again, not over Zoom. Hanukkah will be exciting. Um, programming for the grades. We've had um, eighth grade, um, in, like a intergenerational kind of event where uh, family members, extended family members can join and hopefully we'll be able to have family members come into the building. Um, Adar excitement, dressing up and actually getting to see everyone in the grade and what they wear and different exciting. One thing we used to do is have teachers switch 
and teach in different classes. Um, so you might have like an eighth grade teacher teaching nursery or vice versa. Um, and that wasn't so feasible this year, but I'm hoping to bring all that stuff back. Um, and something to speak to what Ms. Ashwin Nagata said earlier, where we have the STEAM program um, this year that will kind of be moving away from the elective program that we've typically had, um, but keeping some of the staples in the elective program. So all the STEAM elements that existed in the elective program will exist in the STEAM section. Um, and other clubs kind of things like yearbook and debate. Um, names that numbers, those are things that we're going to find time for in the day. Names that numbers needs its own slot, but things like yearbook or debate can have time during lunchtime and other things that might come our way. If there's a group of students who wants to learn sign language and they, they'll meet during lunchtime once a week to really capture that, or and we're going to have a lot of um, optional learning opportunities that existed in electives. And I think Zoom actually might be a good way to continue uh, to use like you want to learn Parsha on Thursday nights with Rabbi Moskowitz, that kind of learning can still exist um, on Zoom or in person. And we'll play with those um, things and trips, overnight trips and Shabbatones, right? Ms. Ashnagar, Rabbi Krauss, we're really going to try uh, over the summer. We'll think and plan to figure out how that looks next year, but we're really hopeful that those um, can happen. And just coming off of the eighth grade trip, like, I don't know, it gave me chills. It was really exciting. And th that's what I want to do in my job. And to not have it done it this past year was hard. And to see the eighth graders really be a grade was incredible. And I'm excited for your children to have the opportunity next year. Okay, thank you. We are looking forward to it. Josh Rocker says to everyone, five days a week of movements is wonderful. So now it's official. It's, the <laughs> medical committee has- talent. What? Okay, sorry about that. I thought that was, I don't, I don't like to talk what Josh is talking. I thought that might have been him. Okay. Um, <laughs> We will get back to the other questions in a second. Hold on. Uh, yes, these are these are really TBD because that's the truth, right? <laughs> I just put the two bullets over here. Vaccination policies, I will tell you the direction that we're going in. Um, we would like everyone who can be vaccinated to be vaccinated. Um, I, you know, that's the direction that we're going in in terms of our policies for staff, for students. Um, but again, it is, first of all, it hasn't been approved for under 12. Um, I think that we are over well over 80% for the kids who could have been vaccinated. We're very grateful to the UJA and to the pharmacy that we part, ESCO Pharmacy, that we were able to partner with to make that happen very quickly. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's where we want to be. That doesn't mean that there is not ever going to be a potential exception. That is something that we're going to have to work out. Frankly, both, you know, what, what, what's, what's legally appropriate and then what, what's communally appropriate. But we are, the, the direction certainly, certainly is in our medical committee. And I think uh, generally in the community, what we want is we want that we, we believe that these vaccinations are important and we want everyone to be vaccinated to make the community a safe place in the school, um, a safe place to be. The, right, the $64,000 question or whatever we're up to these days is uh, uh, what happens when kids are, big for the kids who are unvaccinated, that's a big ELC and lower school question. Will there be masking and distancing still in place? How long will that be for? When will those vaccinations take place? I think that is really, again, you saw the policies that came out even today um, that, um, that have been radically different from what we've seen over the last 10 months. Um, but first of all, for the next seven days, we've made a decision not to, not to make too many changes um, and, to, and to start, you know, guessing about where we're going to be three months from now is, is a waste of everyone's time. So I'm not going to do it. Um, but the direction is that we would like to have as many people or, or all of our people uh, vaccinated if possible. And then to have really, you know, if necessary for medical purposes, you know, individual conversations with those that that think are, are, are unable to or think that they can't. So that's pretty much the direction that we're that we're going in. Zoom is a tool that we have found um, that we have found useful. Um, like I, I think I described to you earlier, um, uh, it was exhilarating to teach my Gemara class for the first time on um, in live, and that's certainly not something that we want to use, um, yeah, you know, as an educational methodology, so to speak. So that uh, certainly the, the departmentalized classes that were on Zoom needed to be on Zoom this year, but we're obviously moving away from that. Um, at the same time, you know, we've learned that you can gather a couple hundred people for a meeting. That's important. You can have parent-teacher conferences. That was certainly uh, the anecdotal uh, evidence. You know, the, the, the certain the feedback that we've gotten anecdotally has been that um, um, that people like those conferences on uh, on Zoom. So there probably will be at least a Zoom option for parent-teacher conferences. We're going to send out a survey shortly uh, to ask you some of these questions in terms of just what people what people want. Uh, but we do think, and frankly, also when a kid is home, not when a kid is really homesick. If you're homesick, you should be homesick and you should get better. Uh, but if you're home 
uh, recovering from an illness. If you're home because you have to be home, uh, but you want to learn, you want to learn Torah, you want to learn English, then 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 we should you know find opportunities for to to be able to do that now that we know those opportunities exist. So so that's going to be. That doesn't mean that people could take two week vacations, and that and it makes it harder for their classmates and harder for their teachers to teach. Um, so that's not what we're talking about. Just you know, kind of you know a more flexible schedule for students in school. We think that students should be in school in person, but we think that obviously there is a place for Zoom, whether it's for meetings, parent teacher conferences, class wide meetings, other kinds of things, and and learning when necessary. Those are things that we're you know continuing to kind of um, to, to keep in mind as we plan for the year. I am going to now uh, try to look through some of these questions and try to, uh, to, to respond to them. And then of course, take your questions and comments uh, over the next um, couple of minutes. And I think we so have a some... bunch of questions about who teaches what. So let me just go over that really quickly. And I think um, it was a little confusing. So, um, First of all, there was a few questions about science as well. So first of all, every grade in the middle school, six, seven, and eight, has dedicated science classes in addition to the STEM periods. So that is not a replacement. Um, so students will have um, a science period approximately three times a week. And then in addition to that, they'll have the STEM program that we discussed. So that that's um, those are two separate things in all three grades. Um, in addition to that, and there was questions about who will teach that science class and who will teach the Tanakh classes. So basically the shift from this year to next year is that classes will be taught um, by the teachers who specialize in that area. So science will be taught by a science teacher, Tanakh will be taught by a Tanakh teacher. Um, English and social studies will be taught more or less um, by the same teacher. In some cases that's not true, but by a humanities teacher. Um, and, and the your child's homeroom teacher um, will be one of those teachers from the team. So your child's homeroom teacher might be the Tanakh teacher um, and will be your child's Tanakh teacher, but that your child will also have an English teacher from, from their band, these three classes, and a science teacher. So not all of the classes will be taught by the homeroom teacher. So homeroom is not the same concept as it was this year, nor how it is in, in the lower school. The idea is more um, that these, um, you know, the, the three homerooms, so if we have in every grade, we're going to have U, V, W, that's three homerooms. And then let's say X, Y, Z, that's three homerooms. So these three homerooms will share um, a band of four teachers, including a support teacher who will be responsible for teaching um, all of those homeroom classes, but who will be teaching according to their area of specialty. So hopefully that clarifies a little bit. And if not, you can post questions about them in the chat. Okay. A couple of people commented on the length of the day. Thank you for raising it. Um, you know, I know the high school had long conversations about this and they, they made some modifications. We obviously thought about it a lot. Um, we do know that we started earlier this year, or at least those that came at eight o'clock started earlier this year, um, and that the day ended earlier. A lot of people liked that. I think what people particularly liked was the fact that it was light outside, even in the winter when, when you were leaving school. Um, and we're going to be doing that anyway, because because four o'clock is four o'clock. Uh, at the same time, you know, and, and that's why we did it for fifth grade, by the way. Fifth grade is going to the lower school schedule where they're done at three o'clock. Um, teachers are all contracted from eight to four. Teachers are going to be working from eight to four. In the middle school, they'll be in classes. In the lower school, they'll be in meetings. Um, but, um, you know, we, we did think about kind of the ideal length of a day for middle school kids. Uh, we certainly can't say that we have the right answer. I think that, you know, there are different feelings about what ideal would be. Um, and also the question as to whether the, you know, eight o'clock to four o'clock or 8.15 or 8.20 to 4.20, um, you know, uh, I think different people have different feelings about it, but this is where we are for now. Um, and like I said, it's at eight o'clock. I don't want to say too soft, I, you know, by 8.10, we certainly want everyone to be in their classrooms. We have, we have things. things. Um, but, um, but, you know, we, we think that this is kind of, um, a good a good time frame that we can that we can work with. Uh, we hope the teams will be back. We hope that there will be intramurals, which we already started now. Um, that will be after four o'clock, so there will be some opportunities after four o'clock for kids to stay in school to be doing uh, meaningful things. Um, but we're kind of happy with you know with the the flow of the day that we saw this year, and then we are um, we are sticking to that. I'm going to give it one more shot, um, and I'm so I'm you know I, I I do feel like. 
you'll get a sense of it as you as you learn more, as it becomes more natural to you, as you see a particular um, schedule. Um, but it's confusing when you say the three classes share. Right. So if, imagine if you got 50 kids who are in three classes and those three classes have a team of teachers who are working with those three classes. Each of them might be assigned a homeroom, so they're going to have advisory with them. They're going to spend more time with those kids, et cetera. But that team of teachers, which will include a Tanakh teacher, any humanities teacher, and a science teacher, um, et cetera, will be working with those 50 kids, right? So, for, you know, so first of all, if you think about it, you're going to have 50 kids who are going to be with a team of teachers. Those, te those teachers and those kids are going to get to know each other a lot. It doesn't mean that there's never going to be cross you know, the crossover between the between the groups. There will be some time for that too, but but that's basically what it's going to what it's going to look like. With the, and then, besides that, you'll have you know very defined classes: math, Gemara, Yerid, um, where they'll be have those specialized teachers will be teaching those particular classes. Um, Rebecca, you want to you want to add to that, or you think we we we've we've done our best to explain what it looks like? Okay. I was muted. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that basically, I think um, Tali Herman said it well, it's clear to say that the four teachers rotate through the three homeroom classes, right? So that's that's correct, right? So yeah. when one class has Tanakh, the Tanakh teacher is teaching that. When one class has science, the science teacher is teaching that. And um, when one class has humanities, the humanities teacher is teaching that. The fourth teacher in most cases is a support teacher. Um, and in, and we'll be teaching some, some um, humanities in some cases, but in, for the most part, we'll be providing support for all the students um, in that group. Um, there was a question about support. So let me just speak to that really briefly. Um, I will say that one of the things that we really, um, what we really thought was a huge silver lining of this year was that so few students needed to drop Judaic studies in order to re receive support. Um, and we also recognize that there were, you know, certain students who um, missed the benefits of working with a, with a, you know, a trained learning specialist. So every team will have um, a, an SLC teacher, a learning specialist. Um, however, our goal is to have far fewer students drop um, Judaic studies classes. And so um, the way that will work is we will have a small number of students who've been identified and, and um, whose parents have been communicated with who will have to drop a, a Judaic studies class because of the level of support they need. But for the most part, support will happen um, in a more organic way, both in terms of um, somebody raised a question about that morning slot, both during that morning slot, which we is a slot that we used this year. Um, we called it a rival slot. I don't know what we're going to call it next year. Um, but during the time when students are coming in and working independently, that will be a time where a lot of support will take place um, and through the course of the day. So there's three homerooms and four teachers, which means that there's um, a member of the team who's generally available to um, provide support, whether that's um, push in, whether that's pull out, um, whether that's in some cases some co-teaching. So it gives us a lot more flexibility to strategically meet the student's needs within the context um, of the current schedule and without having students drop Judaic studies classes. Ali, I'll say, you know, I think that, you know, from, from my experience and from our experience of doing this, you know, I'll actually quote Rebecca, who likes to say our goal is not to make middle school into pre-high school, so to speak. We don't want to, right? we want high school to be high school, middle school to be, to be middle school. At the same time, um, we definitely believe that, right, there's a step up from fifth to sixth, there's a step up from sixth to seventh, from seventh to eighth in terms of the expectations, the curricular expectations, in terms of the Whatever, whatever that shock might be, we think that these kids are coming in. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that ninth grade is not a transition. Ninth grade is a transition. It should be a transition. Uh, but that our kids are prepared for that transition. And, you know, and I have confidence that they will continue to be. This is also not, again, I don't know if the question is coming from kind of a, right, this is not, you know, extension of the lower school homeroom model to the middle school, although there was a lot of good to that too, but that's not what this is. Um, this is a little bit of a hybrid. I think what we're trying to take is there was a lot of good to the fact that you had 
I like to believe that we always had teachers who knew kids and who had relationships with kids, but that you had a certain level of focus between a group of teachers and a group of kids. And that's a, a big part of what we're trying to keep some, some semblance of. Of course, we're also trying to keep, uh, you know, specialized teachers working with working in their subjects. So they like to teach that they're, they're experienced teaching, of course. And that's, that's an important part. That's an important concept as well. But that's kind of what we're, what we're trying to, to get here with this mix of a homeroom type of class and the specialized classes. Although, as you heard, even the homeroom classes don't mean that you have the Tanakh teacher teaching you math. It means that you've got this group of teachers working with each each other um, with a group of kids. Um, I'd like to be true to our time. Miriam, Miriam sorry, you want to answer that, Rebecca? Yeah. Miriam understands the way the schedule works. Yes, so the, the students from each band won't interact during class time, although um, we are hopeful that um, tefillah and lunch and recess um, and other school-wide programs will be grade-wide. Um, but for the purposes of classes, it will um, only be the, um, the number Rabbi Kress keeps using is 50. So it'll only be the 50 students within a band. 48. Yeah, should be closer to 48. But. <laughs> OK. Oh, before we go, we want to show you something. So uh, thank you very much for your time. We really look forward to continuing this conversation with you and working with you. First of all, thank you again for making this a great year. This is a wonderful partnership that we all feel. Um, and uh, a little bit of a taste. I think we're about to get a little bit of a taste of what... Uh... I like to draw and paint. I like to wake up late, but I don't like to clean my room. I like when mommy bakes the challah and the cake. Sometimes I get to lick the spoon. I can get up and stand if someone holds my hand and I can walk along my way. I like to talk to you and when you listen to whatever I have got to say. We can all sing, we can all sing, we can all sing me yachad, yachad. We're creating the yachad. It's a special harmony. We can all sing, we can all sing, we can all sing me yachad, yachad. We're creating the yachad. It's a special harmony. On the night in June, I didn't know much of love, but it came too soon. And it was me and you. Thank you very much. That is all, folks. Thanks a lot. Uh, we've got another one tomorrow night at ELC. You could join us if you want, but uh, I don't know how much overlap there is there. Um, thank you again. Have a great night, and we look forward to continuing to uh, to work with you and to uh, and to work with your kids. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Good night, all. <laughs>